ओके गुड इवनिंग ऑल गुड इवनिंग सर so any question you want from me to solve uh, i have given you homework or all the answer are matching no okay so uh, we will start today uh, miss uh, almost complex variable is finished only one thing is left sometime question come from here but question comes rarely but still we will finish the syllabus no problem so it is a branch point so this branch point actually it is also a singularity so it is also named as branch point singularity actually till now whatever the singularity or poles we have find out that we have find out by putting the denominator equal to zero okay but branch point singularity it comes from numerator part numerator part not from denominator part now from numerator part actually uh, it will not satisfy the same uh, definition what poles or singularity uh, satisfy according to poles or similarity poles are the point where the function is not defined or it is not differentiable understood but for the branch point case in the numerator these are the point where function will have many values so we are confused which which value we have to take understood so that's why the function is not well defined here well defined means we uh, we are not sure which value we should take we, uh, so this type of singularity are known as branch point singularity so their definition is different from there okay so you can say because of a point if function have multi values more than one but it is not infinite definition is totally different but it is not infinite like in uh, normal singularity or normal pole uh, we have given the definition at this point the function is infinite understood but here function is not infinite but it is multi valued multi values are there so we will be confused that which value to take so that's why such type of point are known as branch point singularity means that is a point which is creating so many branch so that's why this is named as branch point singularity so we can't say that our function is not defined or our function is infinite we cannot say that but here only values are uh, so many okay so such points are also considered as singularity only but their name is branch point singularity such points are called as branch point singularity okay we can see one example suppose a function is ln z minus 0 actually it is ln z only i am writing it ln z minus 0 so here z equal to 0 is the singularity or branch point singularity and uh, uh, if i solve it it is ln z and z is what z equal to r e to the power i theta so you can put that value 
ln r e to the power i theta. So it will become this e to the power i theta. I told you that e to the power i theta we can write e to the power i theta plus 2 and pi we can always add. That also will give you the same value. So ln r plus ln e to the power i theta plus 2 and pi. So it will become ln r plus ln and e to the power that will become i theta plus 2 and pi. Okay. So if I want to draw it. So here. this function z can be written like this so if i want to draw it you can see here this is my z equal to 0 point about this i want to draw it about this i want to draw it means uh, this is my r in uh, polar coordinate and this angle is the theta angle you can say it is imaginary axis, real axis. So now you can see if I put n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3. Okay. So you will make a round. So this is a round of 2 pi. Now again you put n equal to 2 so then you will make a different round like this okay so for each value you will have different different point for this uh, ln so actually i am just uh, uh, revolving it but here if you see in fz, uh, I am just revolving 2 pi. I am just revolving with 2 pi, but because you, if you change the n value, n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, if you put like this now, ultimately you are coming to same point. But what is happening here in fz, it will become 3 pi plus theta, it will become 4 pi plus theta, 5 pi plus theta like this. 8 pi plus theta uh, uh, like this okay so here what is happening this fz value is multi value fz value is multi value so such kind of uh, so z equal to 0 here because about z equal to 0 we are getting multi values of fz so that's why z equal to 0 is the branch point singularity. Okay, note down this. Answer. Okay, so we can write here. Actually, suppose fz is this point, this fz. So what will happen if I uh, I put n equal to one? I will get some lower value. If I put n equal to five, I will get some bigger value. So at every moment, I will get different values of uh, fz. So fz is changing. My fz is changing. Complete fz. So we can write here. If we take 2 pi circle about z equals to 0 point,
we reach to a different fz value every time okay so z equals to 0 is called branch point singularity okay so these are uh, some special case uh, uh, which will give you branch point singularity so both case i will tell you uh, some cases are like uh, ln function ln function okay log function suppose my fz equal to ln z minus z 0 to the power a z minus z 0 1 to the power b so this is a different point this is a different point so both are here whatever the function in the ln so that will give you branch point singularity always that you can remember so here z 0 is a branch point and your z 0 1 is also a branch point okay and infinity also can be the branch point infinity also can be the branch point but that depend upon these powers if the sum of these power is integer so then infinity will not be included in branch point but if a plus b is non integer then infinity also you have to take as branch point if a plus b is integer then infinity is not included in branch point but if a plus b is non integer then infinity is also a branch point so like this we decide okay suppose i take example fz equal to ln z minus 2 to the power half into z minus 3 to the power half okay so here what are the branch point find branch point so here point is z equal to 2 point is z equal to 3 z equal to 2 and 3 are two branch points but in uh, because a plus b is equal to what here half plus half equal to 1 this is a integer so infinity is not a branch point infinity will not be the branch point here so only these are the two branch point not down it yes sir if z is not equal to 0 the first function then also it can have multiple values for any value if we add 2 2 and 5 it will face the same uh, what what if z is not 0 in the first first question first page yes sir yeah if z is not 0 also we will get branch point yes yes that also can be but here i am taken this point na i suppose it is z equal to 2 so then 2 will be the branch point sir but it need not have to be zero right the function like is even if it said is uh, not two in this function then also it can have multiple values yes 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 so ln this is the property of ln function yes sir so all ln function will have uh, branch point 
here i have taken this purposely zero but uh, in next cases i am taking it 2 3 whatever it is done now yes sir so so next question is fz equal to ln z minus 2 to the power half if this type of question here means a and b both are not available so don't think about that uh, but in in such cases infinity will be the branch point okay so this can be written as half ln z minus 2 so here z equal to 2 and infinity is or r branch point so fz equal to ln z will also have z equal to 0 and infinity or branch point so like this we decide suppose we have fz equal to z minus 1 to the power half into z minus 2 pure z minus 1 to the power half suppose we have z to the power half z to the power 1 by 3 z to the power uh, 1 by 5 like this na it is with some value so this will always give you five values so these are also known as multi valued so such type of function are also known as multiple values or multi values so from here also we get the branch point so this is z minus 1 to the power half okay so this will also give you the branch point okay uh, but because this because this complete function this complete function is having this much uh, z minus 1 to the power half and z minus 2 so this z minus 2 also can be a point okay but this point because z equal to 2 but it is it is along with z minus 1 to the power half so as a whole it is a multi valued function understood but points can be z equal to 1 also z equal to 2 also and here because power a half here power is 1 so that will be non integer here a plus b is non integer so here z equal to 1 2 and infinity or branch point so okay so this type of function na if you find z to the power half power 3 by 2 oh, means fractional power fractional power also give you the uh, multi values so we can say fz equal to z to the power 1 by 3 is also multi value and gives branch point so here what will be the branch point because z minus 0 to the power 1 by 3 we can write it so here z equal to 0 and infinity or branch point so like this we find the branch points okay note down this Answer. Okay, if I give you combined question, so from there also you can find. My question is: These are just basics to understand. Ln z divided by z plus i into z minus i. Okay, so here. 
comment on singular is so see numerator part this numerator part it is ln z so ln z means z minus 0 to the power 1 so here z equal to 0 is the branch point singularity and here if i put denominator equal to 0 so z equal to minus i z equal to i they will be the simple pole okay so we can have here z equal to minus i and z equal to i are two simple poles also for the one okay and from numerator z equal to 0 is branch point singularity okay so here three branch points uh, means uh, total three 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 singularity will be there two are simple four and z equal to zero is the branch point singularity okay and uh, because this is the single one so with that you can add infinity also so z equal to zero and infinity are branch point singularity so these are the two comments these are the these are also the singularity these are simple poles and these are the branch point singularity so like this you can write okay now we can explain uh, something about suppose this is a question if a function omega equal to z to the power 1 by 3 so first of all this uh, this is a multi valued actually this is not a question just i want to explain uh, if a function is omega equal to z to the power 1 by 3 so here this function then this function is multi value multi value means it will have three values this function will have three values so for all these three values about point so what is the point here i can write it like this so point will be here zero about the point z equal to zero so to explain such type of function we need three different riemann sheets R I E M A W N Riemann planes or sheets planes or you can say sheets also. So uh, suppose this is my z equal to zero point. Okay, so one sheet will be required for one value. Another sheet will be required for another value. One more sheet will be required for another value okay but if you see these point these all point are z equal to zero only all sheet will have center at z equal to zero so this is a riemann sheet rz this is a riemann sheet rz this is a riemann sheet rz suppose this is r1 r2 r3 so these are three Riemann sheet, different different sheet will be required to explain this type of function.
सो फॉर दैट यू कैन थिंक इट लाइक ए मल्टी स्टोरी मल्टी स्टोरी पार्किंग ओके सो इन मल्टी स्टोरी पार्किंग सो दिस इज ए पिलर दिस इज ए पिलर सो पिलर ऑलवेज पास थ्रू जेड इक्वल टू जीरो एंड यू पार्क द कार हेयर और यू कैन पार्क द कार हेयर और यू कैन पार्क द कार हेयर सो दीज वैल्यूज आर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट दिस इज द ग्राउंड फ्लोर फर्स्ट फ्लोर सेकेंड फ्लोर लाइक दिस ओके बट यू विल बी ऑलवेज अबाउट जेड इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट मीन दिस इज ए सेंटर पिलर यू विल बी ऑलवेज रोमिंग अबाउट जेड इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट सो लाइक दिस यू कैन थिंक हेयर सो अबाउट जेड इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट वी रिक्वायर थ्री सीट्स टू एक्सप्लेन सच ए फंक्शन नोट डाउन दिस Sir, sir, are we considering the singularity points as a plane here? Singularity point? As a plane? No, no. Singular singularity point is z equal to zero only. Then, sir, how do we get these three planes? These three planes are because these are multi-valued. Our function is multi-valued. Function will have three different values, so that's why I have to make three uh, plane. But if you put z equal to zero, then function will come to that pillar, and that pillar is z equal uh, means total zero. This pillar, this pillar is working as zero here at this pillar. The value of f z or value of omega is zero only. So if you in in this equation, if you put zero, so then this totally it will become zero so means it will touch to this pillar but otherwise different different values then different different value for different different value three planes i will get r1 r2 r3 means power half power 1 by 3 power 1 by 5 they will give you different different values so suppose it is power 1 by 5 then i will require five riemann sheet to explain such type of function If it is power one by two, so then I require two seats. So both two seats are different different values of f z or this function omega. But if you put z equal to zero, so then uh, it will touch to this pillar, and this pillar is a zero line. You can think like this. So that time, uh, so because this is about the z equal to zero point only. About the zero z equal to zero, you can have three different different values of Omega function about that not at z equal to zero. At z equal to zero, function will become zero. But if you are deviating from z equal to zero little bit, so then you require different different values. Suppose you write z equal to point one, point two, or one, two, three, whatever. Means you are deviating from z equal to zero. So then only it will have three values. Suppose you uh, put here, uh, if you put here z equal to zero, so then omega will be zero. If you put here z equal to two, so then omega will be two to the power one by three means omega cube will be two. So omega cube will be two. So this omega cube equal to two. So omega will be three roots one, two, three. Uh, what are these three values? so that's why they will be different different values different different plane six understood i am telling that if you put z equal to 0 all three sheet will give you only one function that is zero only but if you are deviating from z equal to 0 point you are putting two or three or one only if you put one also so then omega cube equal to 1 we have find out there are three roots So for that three roots, f z value will be different different. So f z value will be different different. To show that f z value different, we are showing them different planes or different seats. So this was given by Rima. Understood? Yes, sir.
So you can give this example. Means if you are deviating from z equal to zero, means about z equal to zero for different points, you will get different values or three values of this omega. So that's why I need three different c to explain all these values. Means uh, just I want to say, if you put z equal to one, so you will have three roots r one, r two, r three. So those R1 values you will put here, R2 value you will put here, R3 value you will put here. Now put Z equal to two. Again you will have three roots. So first root will be shown here, second root will be shown here, third root will be shown here. Again you put Z equal to three, you will get three roots. You will first root you will put here, second root you will put here, third root will you will put here. So all first roots will be put here. All second roots will be put here. All third root will be put here. So that's why they they will be explained by different different planes. These such planes are known as different different sheets, Riemann sheets. These are named as Riemann sheets. Okay, because these will give you three roots. If it is z to the power one by two, it will give you two roots. But at z equal to zero, you get always function is zero. But once you are about z equal to zero, about z equal to zero means z value is deviating from the zero. So then it will, then only it will give you three values. So this is written. Yes, sir. Okay. So one more thing we can write here. At z equal to zero, all values are same, but as we deviate from z equal to zero, that is put z equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. We get three different values. Of function understood. Of function omega equal to z to the power 1 by 3 okay for which we require three because this z value can be one can be two can be three so we will get three uh, r1 roots r2 roots of r3 roots all r1 root i need r1 seat for all R2 roots, I need R2 seed. For all R3 roots, I need R3 seeds, like this. So, uh, for which we require three Riemann seeds. So, only this much is about here. If you put Z equal to zero, all value will become just single value and that is same value of function. Okay. Similarly, for omega equal to z to the power half, we require two Riemann sheets. So like this, we can find. If it is z to the power one by five, then we require five Riemann seats. Okay, now next definition is the branch cut. So this is a very uh, small definition. If we have two branch points,
then the cut or curve joining these two branch point is known as branch cut okay suppose this is a branch point z0 this is a branch point z01 so these are two branch point so just a line joining these two is known as branch cut so it can be a curve also whatever you, by which whatever you join this these two point so that is known as branch cut okay simply you can uh, join them by a curve or jo you can join them by a line so these are known as branch cut joining two branch points this is also branch point okay note down it Okay. Next is removable singularity. Removable singularity. Uh, a singularity which can be or you can say n apparent singularity actually these are not actual singularity these are just appearing but if you if you look the function so these are just appearing that these are the singularity but they can be removed an apparent singularity which can be removed is known as removable singularity see here if i am giving you one question fz equal to 1 by z ln 1 minus z okay so by looking this by looking this what are the singularity this is if you consider this is separate function this is separate function so from ln 1 minus z z equal to 1 is the branch point singularity and because denominator is z if you put z equal to 0 so then function will be infinite understood so here z equal to 0 is a simple pole and z equal to 1 and infinity so here z equal to 1 and infinity are branch point singularities and z equal to 0 is simple pole singularity okay so this is by looking the uh, function but if you if you solve this if you uh, convert this ln 1 minus z uh, in the series 
So F Z will be one by Z into L N one minus Z Lorentz series minus Z minus Z square by two minus Z cube by three. So this one we have already done. Okay, because we have done uh, we have done for actually L N Z minus one for this we have done. So this was Z plus Z square by two plus Z cube by three. So this, uh, if you change this minus sign, so minus sign will be here. So here, what we can do? This Z you can uh, divide here, so it will become minus one, minus Z by two, and minus Z square by three. So this has become my new function okay so here z equal to 0 is not a uh, z equal to 0 is not singularity now that is it has been removed Okay, actually in final answer, z equal to zero is not a singularity at all. But sometimes they can ask you by appearing, by the appearance, it is a singularity. z equal to zero is a singularity. So that's why it is known as removable singularity. Hence, you can say z equal to zero is removable singularity. It is looking, but not actually removable singularity note down this sir yes sir, now it is a series and there are no b terms so it's analytic right yes it is analytic now so then one and infinity are also not there no, no so now no, no singularity is there huh what are you are telling yes sir how is one and infinity now? Is it still there? One and infinity. No, no, they are also not there. But actually, uh, this definition now removable singularity. It is not for branch points. It is only for uh, simple poles or uh, your normal singularities. This definition of ring, uh, removable singularity. So that's why z equal to zero, which was simple pole, it is now removed. So we are uh, commenting on that only. Okay. Yes, sir. Done, sir. Okay. Uh, you can see one more example, simple example I will give you. So Fz equal to sin z by z. So here also z equal to zero is a removable singularity. How? Z equal to zero is simple pole. So by appearance, by appearance so by appearance because if you put z equal to zero so then it is a simple pole but if you open it sin z is what uh, this is one upon z and sin z is what z minus z cube by factorial 3 plus z to the power 5 by factorial 5 and minus dot 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 so z will be uh, divided here so it will become 1 minus z square by factorial 3 and plus z to the power 4 by factorial 5. So again here, z equal to 0 pole or singularity has been removed. So 
So now uh, it is not a singularity now. Z equal to zero because this is analytic has been removed. So Z equal to zero is known as removable singularity. Okay, note down it quickly. Okay. Now, next heading is the principal Riemann sheet. Okay. If we have n Riemann sheets, n Riemann sheets means then that function will have uh, total n values. If we have n Riemann sheets, then n equal to zero sheet will not have any pole. Sorry, any singular point will not have any Singular point. Actually, one more thing we can add here. If we have n Riemann sheets about point z equal to zero, we can take one example. About point can be z equal to two, three, whatever. But if we have, uh, I am taking example of z equal to zero. If we have n Riemann sheets. Avoid about point z equal to zero. And n equal to zero sheet will not have any singular point. Then n equal to zero sheet is known as Principal Riemann sheet. Okay. It means what? Z equal to zero is branch point singularity except n equal to zero sheet. That is Z equal to zero is singular point this is singular point but for n equal to 1 2 3 4 5 all but not for n equal to 0 sheet so a sheet which is not have any singularity that is known as principal riemann sheet so z equal to 0 is singular point at all sheets Except principal Riemann sheet. Okay, so this is the definition of that. And for example, you can you can take ln one. Ln one can be written as ln e to the power i 2 n pi. So this will be i into 2 n pi. Okay, so ln 
वन एल एन वन इफ यू पुट हेयर एल एन एन इक्वल टू जीरो फोर एन इक्वल टू जीरो एल एन वन विल बी वॉट जीरो सो देन इट विल बिकम ए सिंगल वैल्यू ओके दैट इज नो सिंगुलरिटी दैट इज इट विल वर्क एज प्रिंसिपल रिमन सीट सो एन इक्वल टू जीरो सीट विल वर्क एज प्रिंसिपल रिमन सीट बट इफ यू पुट हेयर एन इक्वल टू वन एन इक्वल टू टू एन इक्वल टू थ्री ओके यू विल गेट द इमेजनरी वैल्यू एंड दैट इमेजनरी वैल्यू इज नॉट फिक्स वैल्यू अगेन इट इज नॉट फिक्स इट इज नॉट वेल डिफाइंड सो दैट्स वाई इट इज द uh it will have some uh singularity branch point singularity okay note down this so these are just uh, uh, definitions sometime in some option it can be required done yes sir फोर एन इक्वल टू वन एल एन वन वैल्यू विल बी टू पाई आई आई इन टू टू पाई फोर एन इक्वल टू टू एल एन वन वैल्यू विल बी एन टू फोर पाई सो लाइक दिस ओके सो दीज आर इमेजनरी वैल्यूज next we will see the contour integration involving branch point okay actually what we do whenever the branch point is there so that branch point we try to avoid in our integration because that will that will give us confusion so that portion wherever the branch point is there so near about that a small area will leave this when we do the uh, integration okay so contour always give you some time some type of limits only uh, from where to where we have to integrate that will give you limits suppose this is minus r to r this type of integration is there so contour you will it will give you some region or it will give you some limits okay so you can say contour is like a limits or region at which we have to integrate our function so this is your contour okay so we avoid branch points in our contour 
because with the help of contour only you are finding out the integration na then only you will get the answer but if some branch point are there suppose this is a branch point so that little bit area minus epsilon to epsilon that you have to leave from here because this point will give you confusion because here the function is multi valued so that's why you have to leave such area other than that you can integrate it so this area suppose this is a branch point you have to leave it in your integration so this is our main motto here okay so for that there is one theorem what is that theorem if you want to find out the uh, integral 0 to infinity x to the power alpha fx dx here alpha is in between 0 to 1 and fx value is some ratio ratio of px by qx type if this px here degree of this px function is n and degree of qx function is m so then the this degree na m should be greater than equal to n plus 2 that should be the condition then this value will be equal to 2 pi i divided by 2 pi i divided by 1 minus e to the power 2 pi i into alpha into summation residue and to find out this residue you have to avoid avoid uh zero edge pole why why you have to avoid zero because here this is x to the power alpha so this will work as uh, this is the uh, what i told you if this is suppose x minus 2 to the power half so here x equal to 2 is branch point but here this is x to the power alpha and alpha is in between 0 to 1 so 0 between 0 to 1 means it is less than 1 so this is a fractional thing only so then x uh, minus 0 to the power alpha you can think it so x equal to 0 is the branch point here in view of that i am telling you that avoid zero as the pole because it is a branch point understood you can write here because uh, in our question i told you we have to avoid the branch point in our contour so that's why i am writing it so avoid zero as pole because it is a branch point so note down this theorem done done sir okay so we will do one example on this find integral here alpha is in between 0 to 1 okay see alpha is in between 0 to 
okay now uh, this x to the power minus alpha in our formula what i told you whatever the x to the power is there that should be in between 0 to 1 okay so by this question confusion is created it is x to the power minus alpha and alpha is in between 0 to 1 so minus alpha will be what that will be lesser than 0 understood so that is a big problem here so how to solve that if i add power 1 here so then 1 minus alpha that will become between 0 to and 1 okay so what i can do here you multiply by x in the numerator and by x in the denominator okay so then uh, our condition will be satisfied because our in our condition whatever the x to the power alpha that should be the in between 0 to 1 so minus alpha is not in between 0 to 1 understood suppose it is uh, alpha is uh, 0.2 so minus 0.2 is where less than 0 so i have to make this whole thing between 0 to 1 so what it will become now i will become integral 0 to infinity if i multiply here by x so it will become x to the power 1 minus alpha it will become x to the power 1 minus alpha now this complete thing is between 0 to 1 1 minus 0.2 that will be 0 0.8 so 0 0.8 is 0 to 1 in between that so now it will become x x to the power x plus 1 okay now degree is also matching here degree x to the power degree 1 degree 1 so that will become degree 2 here degree is 1 minus something means that is less than 1 okay so here degree m is m is greater than or equal to n plus 2 so uh, this degree 1 minus something is reducing so this will be considered as 0 only and this degree is considered as 2 so it is almost uh, near about 2 okay so that condition is also matching so here we can apply this this type of question uh, actually rarely comes but uh, because it is in syllabus so just only one example we will see we will not waste much time but uh, it will give you some uh, technical uh, means how to solve such type of problem how to adjust such type of problem so you will get a skill only okay so you can practice it once so here the formula for that will be answer will be in 2 pi i divided by 1 minus e to the power 2 pi i 1 minus alpha because 1 minus alpha is the complete thing uh, into summation r and in summation r again because this is the x to the power something so here x equal to 0 is the branch point so avoid x equal to 0 pole as it is branch point so this will be the formula now what will be my function fz so because i want to find out the residue to find out residue suitable function fz will be z to the power 1 minus alpha from here we have to see this we have to convert z to the power 1 minus alpha divide by z into z plus 1 okay now put the denominator equal to 0 what are the poles put denominator equal to 0 means z equal to 0 and z equal to minus 1 are two poles 
and I already told you that Z equal to zero, you have to leave. But Z equal to zero will not be considered. Why? Because Z equal to zero is a branch point. So that's why we have to avoid it. So only Z equal to one will give you the residue. So that we have to find. Okay, so note down up to here. Done. Yes, sir. Okay, now uh, residue at Z equal to minus one. So Z equal to minus one is a simple pole. So simple pole method we will use. So residue will be limit Z tending to minus one, uh, Z minus alpha means it will become Z plus one into FZ. FZ is Z to the power one minus alpha divided by Z into Z plus one. So this will be cut and it is Z to the power one minus alpha upon uh, Z to the power, sorry, Z. So then you can put Z equal to minus one. So it is minus one to the power one minus alpha divided by minus one. Okay. So actually it will be minus one to the power one. If you take it in numerator, that will be minus one. Or simply z to the power one will be cut. It is z to the power minus alpha only. So this also will be minus one to the power alpha. This much, this much is remaining. Okay. Now minus one can be written as e to the power i pi is what minus one. So minus one can be replaced by e to the power i pi. So it will be e to the power i pi to the power alpha or e to the power i pi alpha mm, minus sorry minus sign is there no? minus alpha so your residue is e to the power minus i pi alpha so this value i can put in the answer hence integral will be 2 pi i divided by 1 minus e to the power 2 pi i into 1 minus alpha into summation r means e to the power minus i pi alpha. This will be the answer. So now we can simplify it. This e to the power minus i i pi alpha, you can uh, take it in the denominator. So then we have to see. It will become. It will become 2 pi i divided by e to the power i pi alpha. Okay. Minus. So here it will be added. So once it is added, so e to the power 2 pi i. Okay. And e to the power so like this you can do. e to the power 2 pi i into e to the power minus uh, 2 pi i alpha. 
okay and because this is multiplied it will be e to the power pi i alpha so both of them will give you only e to the power minus pi i alpha understood and e to the power 2 pi i value is 1 e to the power 2 pi i value it will be cos 2 pi plus i sin 2 pi so i sin 2 pi is 0 cos 2 pi is 1 so answer is 1 for that so this value is 1 and this and this they will be added it will give you minus pi i alpha so ultimately 2 pi i divided by e to the power i pi alpha minus e to the power minus i pi alpha and e to the power minus i pi sorry plus i pi alpha minus e to the power minus i pi alpha divided by 2 pi so 2 i divided by 2 i that 2 i i can take in denominator here so that will become pi divided by e to the power i pi alpha minus e to the power minus i pi alpha divided by 2 i so this term is nothing but sin pi alpha this will be pi upon sin pi alpha so this is the value of integral okay so you have to develop this much of a skill how to convert this into the answer note down this so your final answer is i equal to pi upon sin pi a. if you want to leave this type of question you can leave but once you have to go through okay because it is in syllabus Yes. So can you explain how it is branch going this side equal to zero? Here there is no logarithm log function. Huh? Here there is no log function. And uh, we took this side equal to zero as branch going. Oh, ho. First you note down this. Done? Yes, sir. Okay. I told you two type now. Ln z minus uh, 2. Okay. So here z equal to 2 is a branch point. This was one type. If my function is like uh, z to the power 1 by 3. So here z equal to 0 is a branch point. So this type it is now. See here. This is x to the power alpha and alpha is in between 0 and 1. So in between 0 and 1 means it is fractional thing. Either it is 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4, 1 by 5, 1 by 100, whatever. So that will always give value 0 to 1 between 0 to 1. So x to the power alpha means here x equal to 0 is the branch point. Okay, so that's why here, whatever the x to the power alpha, that must be between 0 to 1. So in this question, they have given confusion. Alpha is 0 to be between 0 to 1, but it is not satisfying my condition. My condition is that whatever the power of x, that should be between 0 to 1. 
So suppose here because alpha is zero 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 to one, suppose alpha is zero point two. But here, whatever the power of x that is minus point two, minus point two is not between zero to one. So that's why I wisely converted that complete thing power of that between zero to one. I have added power one here in denominator also. So then one minus point two will be become point eight, and that is between zero to one. Okay. So now here x equal to zero will become the because x to the power whatever in zero point something zero point eight zero point six that will be something in ratio one by hundred one by ten one by two whatever. So it will give you multi values. So that's why x equal to zero is branch point here, and that we have to avoid. Okay. Now I will take one net net question also. And see, question is very easy. So just uh, you have to apply the methodology what we have seen. It is five marks question, and nothing was there. Net December two thousand eighteen. The question is. the contour c of the following integral dz this is the contour and complete function is given like that dz they have written uh, before the function But no issue in that. Z minus one, z minus three, divided by z square minus twenty five to cube. In the complex z plane. in the contour c of the following integral this in the complex z plane the contour c of the following integral this in the complex plane uh, z plane is shown in the figure below uh they have given this contour like this means this contour is just only uh, to give you some hint this contour is like this this point is 1 this point is 3 okay so from here just we will get the clue to get the answer and what is the question this integral is equivalent to an integral along the contours a this point is minus 5 uh this is same imaginary value and real axis and contour is anti clockwise and there is a point here then this cut again this point here and one contour they have given clockwise direction and this point is 5 okay b option they have given this is minus 5 point contour is clockwise point 1 Point three, 
and this is five because it is on real axis and this contour is also clockwise okay so note down this first done sir c option D option okay now come to the question tell me this is my function okay what are the branch point here and what are the poles here can anybody tell see this function i can write as z minus 1 to the power half into z minus 3 to the power half divided by z square minus 25 i can write z minus 5 to the power cube and z plus 5 to the power cube understood so what are the poles what are the branch points it is clear now it is z minus z 0 to the power half it means z equal to 1 is a branch point z minus 3 to the power half it means z equal to 3 is a branch point z minus 5 to the power 3 so this is in uh, denominator so z equal to 5 is a pole of order 3 z equal to minus 5 is a pole of order 3 so it is clear picture is clear so you can say z equal to 1 and 3 because power half power half a plus b is 1 that is integer so infinity is not the uh, branch point so only z equal to 1 and 3 are branch point it is clear if any doubt please ask and z equal to 5 and minus 5 are poles understood now what i told you once you have to integrate this function poles you have to left so we have to leave the poles they have given this contour but because i know z equal to 1 and z equal to 3 are branch point so we have to leave them so we have to kick out this z equal to 1 and z equal to 3 so z equal to 1 and z equal to 3 are two branch point if i am drawing any curve in between them that is known as branch cut so that complete thing from here to here that we have to kick out it but we have to consider z equal to 5 also z equal to minus 5 also and our contour is anti-clockwise so all these things only we have to uh, consider and then check the options okay now come to come with me check this first option here these are one and three these are two branch points so they are out from the integral so that is okay 
but z equal to minus 5 it is having anti clockwise contour so this is also okay this thing is also okay but here z equal to 5 pole it is having clockwise contour so this thing is wrong in this picture coming to question num uh, option number b here this thing is clockwise so that is also wrong this is okay this is also wrong so here in option c uh, the contour is anti clockwise that is okay B two branch point they are outside the contour that is also okay because these are two branch point they should be outside and z equal to 5 for this contour is anti clockwise so that is also okay so this answer is correct okay so what i taught you the basics all the basics will be applied here and then question will be made if you know all the basics so then you can check this options understood any doubt you can ask again if everybody understood then it is okay it is clear from the picture you converted that to the, uh, half half so here z equal to 1 and 3 are two branch point z equal to 5 minus 5 are two poles so only poles you have to integrate it means contour you have to make about these poles and because contour is anti clockwise so that also you have to check our contour should be anti clockwise and we have to leave these two point so we have left them so they are outside the contour okay so it is a branch cut in between them if you draw a line that is a branch cut but that uh, everything should be out so on that analogy we can say that option c is the correct answer okay so just two three line you can mention so that you can remember it fz equal to z minus 1 to the power half z minus 3 to the power half divided by z minus 5 to the power 3 z plus 5 to the power 3 here z equal to 1 2 sorry 1 3 are two branch points okay a plus b is equal to half plus half so infinity is not branch point everything is used here infinity is not branch point so this was from here okay z equal to 5 and 3 sorry 5 and minus 5 are two poles of order 3 okay and contour is anti clockwise okay okay so uh, this z equal to 1 and 3 are two branch point should be avoided from contour because contour give us integration so contour should be avoided from contour so these things only if you mind so then option c is the correct so option c is correct understood so this type of question it is like uh, in the uh, question we don't know if both are inside but all options are having so we take it like that yes 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 means uh, whatever the most uh, appropriate answer that is c done yes, okay so it is finished now complex variable tomorrow we will start some another topic so what you need next uh actually simpson one third rule that also come uh, every alternate year that we can do and uh, we can do special functions also so we can do 
Yes, a special function. Yes, so we will do that. Okay, no problem. And because of a special functions now, they are very uh, difficult to uh, learn completely. But whatever the question comes in the exam, okay. So in that view only, we will solve them. So then it will be easy. Okay, so this is all for today. Thank you, sir. Okay, welcome. Thank you, sir. Welcome.